open our Bibles to Daniel chapter 1. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of reading. That's why I don't want you to have to stand up and your legs start getting tired. I know you guys were worshiping, and so I just want you just to follow me. Amen? Amen. And it's chapter 1, verse 3 to 16. Verse 3 to 16. Okay, the book of Daniel. Then the king ordered Aspenaz. I'm going to try to pronounce these names, okay? <laughs> Chief of his um, court officials to bring into the king's service some other Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome. They didn't want just anybody, they just wanted the handsome. Amen. I read that and I was like, wow, they just want the handsome people, you know? <laughs> what's, what's going on with that? Without any physical and handsome, showing at, um, aptitude of every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualities to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. Wow, this was like the king's table, the king's menu, the good food, right? They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some, of the Jew some from Judah, Daniel, Ananias, I'm sorry, I know them in Spanish, Daniel, Ananias, Meshach, and Azarias, Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, he named them Bezazar. To Ananias, Sadrach. To Misho, Sadrach, Meshach, Meshach. And to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to define, defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief officials for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused, had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my Lord, the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men? your age. The king would have, would then have my head because of you. Daniel um, then said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over da Daniel, Ananias, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servant for ten, um, 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Wow, from the king's menu, to vegetables and water. <laughs> then compare our appearance with that of our young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished nourished than any other, than any of the young men who ate the royal food. Wow. So make sure you eat your greens, okay? So the guard took away their choice food and the wine. They were to drink and give vegetables instead. To this four young, to, they, to these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kind. Wow. I want you to look at your neighbor, and this is the theme of the message of today. And I want you to look at them real seriously, okay? Look at them and say, make sure you eat your greens. <laughs> Now, 
No, I'm just joking. That's not the mess. That's not the theme of the message of today. Okay, that was a good one, right, Pastor? That was a good one. <laughs> um, no, it's not. So, <laughs> the theme of the message. Now, look at your neighbor, and this is the real theme of the message. Amen. Safeguard your identity. Safeguard your identity. Amen. That was a little bit of an icebreaker. Amen. That was more for me than it was for you guys, okay? Now I could relax. Amen. Uh, so we see, uh, as a summary, we see that um, we see Daniel and his friends. I'm not going to try to say all four of their names because I'm going to chop up their names. So if you, if you hear me say Daniel and their fr- his friends, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. We see that Daniel and his friends were chosen to be trained by the, Babel, um, by Babylon, by the Babylonians for the service of the king. Why was this? this? This took place because Israel was taken over by the Babylonians. And they took them as slaves, pretty much. They took them in as slaves. But a part of them, they, they were looking, the king was looking for the best of the best of the group. The king, that's why when you see how he described, he was like none that were defected, none that, that they had to be handsome. He was looking for the best of the best. And out of that group, he saw that they chose Daniel, they chose Ananias, Meshach, Meshach, and Azariah which you guys know them as Meshach and Abednego. If I told you guys these names, you guys, I never heard these guys before. But if I told you their other names, then you'll be like, oh, yeah, I know who they are, right? So we see, we see that they were taken as, as slaves and they were taken as in, uh, in, to be part of a, like a training program. And, and, and to be indoctrinated, and, and, um, and indoctrinated of, of, their, of their culture. And we see this. And before I continue going forward, I, I, um, the word I, um, identity is um, qualities, the, the meaning. I like to um, start with the meanings of the word, of the, t- of the theme. And identity is qualities, beliefs, personalities, looks, and, or, Expressions that distinguish a person or a group. So when I refer to safeguard your identity, the words that I want you to really focus on, the word that I want you to focus on is beliefs. Your beliefs is what distinguishes us as a group. And we have to safeguard our beliefs. We have something in common that we are able to identify with each other. I'm able to identify with you and you are able to identify with me because we have something in common. And what, make, what, what we have in common is our beliefs. That's what distinguishes us from the rest. It's our beliefs in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what distinguishes us from the world. The world and us do not see eye to eye. Understand that. Because they have their own views and we have our own views. And we are in constant battle. We are in a constant tug of war, if you can say. We don't see eye to eye. The world's beliefs are going against our beliefs. And the world wants to impose its beliefs on us. That's what was going on in this moment with Daniel and his friends. The Babylonians were imposing their beliefs on them. But God is looking for men and women that will dare to stand like Daniel and his friends and safeguard their identity, safeguard their beliefs. 
That's what God is looking for from each and every one that is sitting here today. They want to impose the beliefs, their belief systems on us. But we are, but we as children of God, we have to take a stand. Take a stand like Daniel and his friends and safeguard our identity. Because our identity is being threatened in a strong way. It's being threatened from all sides. We have to decide who we are going to serve, church. Oh, hallelujah. Our beliefs are being attacked from all sides. The further the world goes away from God, it's an attack to the church. The more that the world, when it was once bad at one point and good now, that's an attack to the church. The more that they accept abortions as it's a good thing, that's an attack to the church. The more that they accept same-sex marriages as a good thing, that's an attack to the church. That is an, a threat to your identity, a threat to your beliefs, church. But we have to take a stand like they did. They took a stand. We cannot be Christians of double identity. Oh, man. We can't. We can't be the, uh, Christians of double identity. That one, you, when you're here, you're pretending to be one thing, but when you're out the doors, you're another thing. When you're here, you got one foot in, and then when you're there, you got one foot out. Oh, God, you guys are so quiet. <laughs> A double identity. I want to serve God, but yet I want to serve the world. <laughs> and Matthew, uh, Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you would hate the one and love, and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve two masters. You can't be double identity. You can't, you can't want to be, uh, have belief of the things of the world and belief of the things of God. No, you have to choose that, yes, we are part of this world. Yes, we are walking in this world, but we're not of this right. world. Right. We're, we're pilg um, pilgrimages, right? We're just, we're just passing by. And we have to put our devotion and our desire and our all to serving God and God alone. We have to choose which belief systems are we going to follow. Are we going to follow the belief systems of the world? Or are we going to follow the belief systems of God? And sadly, church, I, the sad thing is, not in our church, I thank God for that. But in many churches, mm, in many churches, if I try to preach this, if I submitted this word to the pastor, he'll be like, no, not in my church. Because sadly, that's what's going on in today's churches. Two belief systems are pulling them. The belief system of the world and the belief system of God. But thank God for freedom. Thank God for freedom because this is a church that believes in the belief system of the most high God. Oh, thank God. We have to choose which belief system are we going to follow. Joshua 24, 15 says, but if you serve the Lord, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable, wow, to you, then choose yourself this day whom you will serve, 
whether you serve the gods your ancestors served beyond the utopia, the you tape Euphrates, amen. Or the gods of the Amorites in whose lands you are living, but as far as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Wow. Who in this house would dare to declare that today? Who in this house would dare to declare that today? Amen. Say it with me. Say it with me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house. Joshua was dealing with this at this point. Because when the people of um, Israel, when they were coming out and they were going, trying to go into the promised land, they had some bad habits still. They were still serving the gods of their ancestors. And Joshua had to nip it in the butt right away. And he had to say, listen, as for me and my house, I don't know what you guys are going to do, but as for me and my house, we're going to what? Serve the, Lord. Serve the Lord. Amen? Amen? I always remember Andy always tell me, if, there, if, you, if everybody's quiet, it's because it's really digging in. But I, I, I just want to, I think what, what it is is that the church needs a wake-up call. It needs a wake-up call. We, we're, 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 we're falling asleep, and we're not really opening our eyes to see what is really going on. Everything that the, every time the world pulls away, it's an attack to the church. I love Sean. Sean said something this morning when he was praying. He was like, he was praying and he was saying, thank God for the country that we live in. Thank God that we are able to live in, um, able to worship God in freedom. But you know what, Sean? And you know what? That's going to be taken away at one point. Because the further away that the, well, the further away that the world goes away from the church, our freedoms are going to start being pulled away. Our freedoms are going to start being taken away. Now, now you got to ask yourself this question. When I see myself in that position, what am I going to do? Am I going to stand firm? Am I going to stand firm no matter what's going around me, no matter how far the world is going away from God? Am I going to stand firm or am I going to cave in under the pressure? That's the, what you need to ask yourself. And examine, that's between you and God. Because sometimes, we, 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 sometimes we're like Peter. Lord, I will never deny you. Lord, I won't forsake you. I won't deny you. But when you're placed in that position, like he was, he denied him. It's easy. It's, it, it, it's, it, it, when everything is beautiful and when we have our freedom, we could profess those words, but when it's snatched away, can you still profess those same words and say, Lord, I will never deny you. Lord, no matter how hard it gets, I won't deny you. And you know what, church? Our words will be tested. The chief official tested Daniel's word. He said, test us for 10 days to see if, if eating vegetables and water, if we're not going to look as strong as the ones we're eating from the king's menu. Your words will be tested. God will place you in a test to see if you really are all about your words. Amen? Amen. Amen. You have to stand firm. 
and know your enemy's attacks. That's point, the number three point. Ephesians 6, 10, verse 13, um, chapter, 10, chapter 6, verse 10 to 13. Finally, be strong in the Lord, and he and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God. What I was saying, you have to safeguard what? Your identity. An armor is to protect you. Safeguard full full armor of God so that you can take so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rules, against the authorities, against the powers of these dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. I love how I, when he says it in the scripture, he says that the devil screen, schemes, right? And then he starts to mention everything else. Don't kid yourself. Behind the curtains, the one who's pulling the strings is the devil. Yeah, that's right. He starts with him first, and then everything else comes next. Because behind the curtains, the one who's pulling the strings like a puppeteer? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Like a puppeteer? They go like that. Oh, he wants you to go this way, he goes this way. He wants you to go that way, he goes that way. It's a puppeteer. It looks it's amazing. Just by the pull of just strings, you're able to go this way. Sometimes he does that with a lot of us. <laughs> because we don't know how to safeguard our identity. And we haven't chose which master we're going to allow to serve. So he's just pulling what? All the strings. We're like Pinocchio. He's pulling all strings. But thank God for Jesus that 2,000 years ago he died on the cross and those strings got what? Snipped. And now I can able to walk. I'm able to talk with the freedom. I, that's what I love about our church because the name freedom. <laughs> Because it's so true, because of Christ, we have that freedom to lift our hands up. We have that freedom to give God the glory. We have that freedom to worship him. We have that freedom that, 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 that I know that every day I get up is a day closer to seeing him once again. I, I, I enjoy that. I don't enjoy being like a puppet and being taken to the left or taken to the right. No, I don't enjoy none of that. I enjoy my freedom that I could serve God the way I could serve him with freedom, church. Yeah. And that's what God wants us to do, that, that in the days that we are living, despite of the things that are going on in the world, that I could still be free to open my mouth and worship him and him alone. That despite of my circumstances, despite of the world that I'm in, despite of what's going on in my job, despite of what's going on in my, in my school, despite of what's going on in my home, I can still lift up my hands and give God the praise and the glory. That's what God desires from us. But I have to safeguard my beliefs. I can't allow my beliefs to be threatened. I have to protect it with a zealous protection that this is mine and nobody is going to touch it. Yeah. You have to protect it. This is my salvation and nobody's going to touch it. This is my key, my ticket to heaven and nobody's going to touch it. Oh, hallelujah. The Pentecostal preacher just came out of me. I'm sorry. Hey, yes, amen. <laughs> but that's what God is looking for, church. Yeah. 
He's looking for people that will just stand. Just stand. Just stand firm and believe. Whatever God spoke, believe it. Whatever God declared, believe it. Stop believing in the lives of the enemy. Stop believing the lives of the world. They're just lies. Those are just what? Schemes of the devil to threaten your identity. But I choose today, as Joshua chose, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I choose today not to believe the world, but I choose today to believe in Christ and Christ alone. I choose to believe it. Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I choose today to believe in him. Oh, hallelujah. You see, the first line of defense is to know how your enemy operates. Those that served in the army, right? You don't go into a battle without really strategizing and really getting information about your, what, enemy. Because you know if you go in without getting any type of information, you know it's going to be a slaughter. You know that you're putting your brothers in arm in danger. But they try to prepare you as much as they can. They give you some, as much intel of the other, the other side as much as they can to prepare you guys, right? Yeah. And that's the same thing in our Christian walk. God, all the information you need to know about your enemy is in here. He's not putting you in a battlefield blinded. He put all the information that you need to know how your enemy operates is right in here. And if you don't know how your enemy operates, it's because maybe you really not. You really not reading. Maybe if you're having a whole bunch of failed um, missions, maybe it's because maybe you're not reading up on your enemy and how he operates. I love, um, for example, fighters, right? Boxers, and I shouldn't be preaching about boxers and, MMA, and MMAs, just preaching about violence and everything. I'm sorry, guys. But these guys, right? They don't just go into the gym and start lifting weights and eating good. That, that's not all, that is not all their training is based on. They're also sitting down watching hours of footage of their opponent. These fighters are seeing what their weak points are, what their strength points are, what if they like to do hooks or they like to do uppercuts or they're good on the ground. They, they're studying their opponents. And it's the same thing as Christians. We need to know who we're facing. I don't know about you, but I don't like to lose a fight. I want to have the upper hand. I don't want to come home one day and my wife sees me with a black eye. No. But if she sees me, I'm going to tell her, well, you should see the other guy. Right? Because that's what's going to happen. You know, the, the, the enemy's going to jab a couple of times. You're going to get a black eye here and there. But you got to say, but you should see the other guy. I didn't go down with a fight, without a fight, you know? Amen? Amen. You have to know your opponent. Osea, Osea, Osea. Osea. I'll get these names one day in my lifetime. Correct, amen? 4.6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or some translations say perish my people are destroyed or perish from lack of knowledge a lot of the times we are in losing battles because of lack of knowledge of knowing how our enemy operates and knowing how the world operates 
We're going in blinded. We're going in into a losing fight. But God created us to be more than what? More than conquerors. So when I was studying the, the message and studying the scriptures, the scripture of this of Daniel, I was I was saying to myself, I kept saying, why Daniel didn't really put up a protest when they changed his name? And why he really didn't put up a protest about learning their literature and learning their language. But he put a protest about what was he was what he was going to eat and drink. And I kept saying to myself, and I'm saying, Lord, why, why was this so, so, it was more important to him this than it was the name change yeah. and learning the literature and learning the language. Why was that, why was this more important? And, and, and the Lord kept saying, look a little deeper, Sammy, look a little deeper, you're missing, you're missing it. And I keep, and I'm reading, I'm like, I'm going like this and I'm reading. At one point I had to tell my wife, I said, hon, I need a break because my, my brain is becoming like, um, like scrambled eggs right now. And I'm reading and I'm missing it, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. And then at four in the morning, that's when I was putting the final details, pastor. At four in the morning, I read it again. And the Lord started to open it up like a beautiful flower. And he started to show me why. It was more important what was them ingesting than w their name and the language change. Why? Why? You could, anybody can change your name. Anybody can change your name. But as long as you remember your name and as long as God knows your name, that's all that matters. It was a superficial change. It was a change that was above the surface. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to learn another language. That's just better on your resume. <laughs> that you know another language is okay. Yeah. In fact, some jobs will pay you more because yeah. you speak another language. It's okay. It's a what? Superficial change. It's a surface change. But the change put a protest was an internal change that he wasn't going to permit to happen. You see, what you eat and drink is going internally. He wasn't going to stand for that. He says, you can change my name. Fine, you can change my name. The world can change your name and say that you're crazy for being Christian. You're radicals. The world can say that you you're, will never amount to nothing. You'll be like your mother. You'll be like your father that, that, that never were nothing. That's what the world could say. They could tag these things and change your name. But what matters is that you remember who you really are and what this word says about me. Because this word says that I am a prince. Oh yeah, I'm a prince. I'm Prince Charming. The Bible says I am a prince. The Bible says I am royalty. The Bible says that I'm, an, I'm the apple of his eye. The Bible says that, that, that I'm an ambassador. The Bible says Oh, these are all the names that God, my God calls me by. Amen. And I need to, rem I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world tags me. But, 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 but I remember what the Bible says. Oh, hallelujah. And not just what the Bible says, but I know he knows my name. For the Babylonians, it was Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But when they were in private, Daniel was like, hey, Hananias. Hey, Asariah. How are you? How was your day today? How was your day in training? 
They didn't call them by because they knew who they were. Yeah. It was a superficial change. So you could change my name. Fine. It's okay. But I know who I am. And I know he knows who I am. You could teach me your literature and teach me your language, meaning I could be a part of your crowd, but I know where I come from. I could be working with a bunch of heathens, <laughs> but I know I'm saved and washed by the blood. You guys talk one way, but I talk a godly way. Oh, hallelujah. So you can change my name. You could teach me your literatures and your language, but I know who I serve. Yeah. But you will not touch what's inside of me. Yeah. Now Daniel saw it as a spiritual attack. It went beyond the superficial. He saw now this is an attack that you're trying to attack my internal, what I have inside of me. He saw it as a spiritual attack. He saw that they were imposing their beliefs on my beliefs. The Jewish culture, the, Jew, the Jewish culture and people, they have strict laws of what they can eat and what they cannot eat. So their belief system, his belief system was like, mm -mm, no, you're not touching that. You're not touching my belief system. You're touching what, what helps me get closer to him, you're not touching it. You're not going to defile what's inside of me. Oh, no, 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 no. The world, the enemy wants to defile what's inside of you. But you have to stand and safeguard what is inside of you, church. What is inside of you is greater than whatever the world can offer. And the enemy knows that. He knows, he knows, he knows without a doubt what's inside of you is greater, what, greater than the world can offer you. He knows that. And if he's able to find a weak point in your defense, and able to creep in and defy what's inside of you, he's won the battle. But I stand here today declaring a word over your life, declaring a prophetic word over your life, that no matter what attacks may come, I declare today that your defense from this point on, your defense is going to be unbreakable, church. No weapons formed against you will prosper. Doesn't mean that the weapon will not be formed. It, what it means is that they could form it. They could shoot the arrow, but it's not going to do what the arrow intends to do. Oh, hallelujah, church. Oh, I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. Oh, glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. What's inside of you is great. 1 John 4, verse 4 and 6, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Watch this, watch this. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. And, whatever, and, what, and whoever knows God listens to us. You see, we identify with what? Each other because of our beliefs. But the world will never understand what you're talking about. You're like, you're, you, when you speak to them at times, unless the Holy Spirit starts to deal with them, you're going to sound like Charlie Brown. You ever seen the Charlie Brown come on the cartoon? Wah, 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 That's how you're going to sound to them. They're not going to, sorry, like the, the newer generation just went right by over their heads. 
my generation and the older generation. No, the younger. You guys are younger, younger generation, amen? You're going to sound like that, the Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. And they're going to look at you like Scooby-Doo. Like. <laughs> uh? wah, 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 wah. But you know something? Continue to wah, 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 wah. No, 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 seriously, seriously, no, continue, continue, look, because eventually, look, you're going to continue, continue, wah, 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 and continue to do it, continue to do it, continue planting the seed, even though they ignore you, even though they 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 talk bad about you, and they think that you're crazy, keep going, wah, 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 and even if they keep looking at you like Scooby-Doo, wah, 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 and then eventually their ears are going to start to open. And then they're going to start hearing. You know, 2,000 years ago, Andy, somebody died on the cross for you. Yeah. Somebody gave his life for you because he loved you so much. That's, they're going to start to hear that message Amen. in their ears. Amen. So even if they think you're crazy for keep doing it and doing it, do it. Amen. That's how it's going to change this world. Because we need Christians like that, yeah. that don't give up, that keep going. Walk, 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 walk. Until here, Jesus loves you. Yeah. Oh, God, hallelujah. So they don't, they won't what you're saying but eventually they will they will you can stand